Can you talk to us about some of the data that you're seeing? What's led you to these conclusions? And importantly, what could lead you to reverse your conclusions in that it could potentially be a shorter, shallower, less severe recession that you anticipate? So what are you looking at that brought you to these conclusions and what could lead you to reverse them? Now, before I go to that one, let me finalize a point. The argument about the greater recession becoming greater depression is based essentially on three key columns. Column number one is the health response is wrong. Mm. We're doing mitigation, we're not doing suppression. And even if we're doing suppression, the virus is gonna mutate and by next winter, when we're supposed to go back to growth after recession of three quarters, we could have another spike in the pandemic, even under suppression. If we're not gonna have suppression, but only mitigation, it's gonna be a nightmare, as any epidemiological model suggests. So what's when the distinction we're supposed to recover, we're gonna go back to another recession, yes? I'm sorry, what's the difference between those two points, mitigation versus suppression? Well, mitigation is this kind of voluntary social distancing, isolation, stay at home. Uh, we're gonna shut down maybe businesses in New York and California, but the rest of the country can op stay open, stores, businesses, economic activity, restaurant, and we're doing mitigation and it's actual mitigation light. Suppression means, sorry guys, we shut down every economic activity apart from basic essentials. You stay at home compulsory, you cannot work unless you work from home, you cannot go out unless you go and buy food and medicines and take a walk for half an hour just to refresh a day and no more. And we're going to monitor you and we're going to punish you. If you do otherwise, fines, arrest, whatever. And like in China, they use drones and robots and literally an app that gives to everybody a green, yellow or red card. It's big brother in China. We don't want to go there. But the reality is that you have to find an enforcement. If you don't enforce it and you're basing yourself on people doing voluntarily, it's going to be mitigation, mitigation light. We're not doing even mitigation. We're doing mitigation light in the U.S., let alone suppression. Mm -hmm. Suppression was what China did for three months and what Italy is doing right now. We're not doing it. So in that situation is going to go like wildfire this year. And then once we control it and summer comes, the winter is going to come. The virus is going to mutate. We're not going to have a vaccine for 18 months. These antiviral or other therapeutics are in limited supply. We don't even know whether they work. Guaranteed. By next winter, we'll have another spike in the pandemic. That's why people say it will be a three-quarter recession. Q1, Q2, Q3, but then by the fall, we're going to start growing again. What if by the fall, we have another round of this pandemic, then we're going to go into depression. Two, by next year, if we're going in another recession, is continuing, then we'll have to do another 10% of GDP fiscal stimulus and monetize it. And then we end up into the kind of inflationary situation that I warned about that leads you to stagflation. And then you have a nightmare of stagflation. And three, as I pointed out in a number of pieces recently, there's a wide range of geopolitical risk, a, literally a global rivalry between US, China, Russia, Iran, and North Korea. And this country are gonna try to disrupt the US economy, the US political system. We'll have the first global cyber war uh, in, the, in this country this year, and it's gonna create geopolitical chaos, pot politically, even violence after the U.S. election, let alone the risk of a war between U.S. and Iran in the Middle East. So there's this trifecta or Bermuda Triangle of the wrong health response and the fact that the virus is going to come back next winter, of running out of policy bullets once we monetize fiscal deficit forever, and then geopolitical shock, there are negative supply and that lead us to a geopolitical depression. That's a recipe for a greater depression. How do you quantify some of those risks, Nero? When you look at, when you talk about things like, for example, cyber warfare or the potential for a hot war in the Gulf, how do you quantify what those risks look like? Well, right now, markets are completely disregarded. In the case of the war between US and Iran, they're saying we kill Soleimani, they send a bunch of rockets, we restrain ourselves. Now, Iran is contained and they're not going to do anything. I think that is the wrong analysis of what's happening in Iran. You know, I happen to be a Persian Jew, I understand how the Iranian think. And mm. I tell you uh, simply, and I could discuss it for hours, mm. if, the, uh, if Trump is reelected, the regime in Iran is dead because four more years of sanction and other pressure means they collapse. And the regime wants to stay in power. The only one goal they have is to stay in power. That's a paramount. And it's not going to be an external shock that leads to regime change, but an internal revolution. 
So suppose that Iran escalates the situation in the Middle East to proxies, initially attacking Israel and Saudi Arabia, creating chaos with its own proxies, and then sucking U.S. in a conflict. What's going to happen? All now is below 20. It's going to spike to 150. The stock market is going to crash, and the recession is going to become more severe, like 73, like 79, like 1990. And once that happens, there's not going to be regime change in Iran. Why? Even if we bomb the hell out of Iran in that war with an aerial campaign, the regime stays in power. You need to have one million boots on the ground in order to have regime change in Iran. And we're not going to have one million people, American soldiers, going and invading Iran. It's going to be air campaign. And once you bomb Iran, even half of the country that is against the regime is going to support the regime because they're nationalists. If you attack them, even those who hate uh, Khamenei are going to support him the same way they went and rallied by the millions when we killed Soleimani. So we're not going to have regime change in Iran. The regime, the Iran can cause a spike in oil prices, a collapse of the stock market bigger than this one, and a more severe recession. And once that happens, regime change is going to occur, not in Iran, but it's going to occur in the United States. Look at the three previous geopolitical shocks in the Middle East, 73, 79, and 1990. After these shocks, we had recession, stock market crash, and inflation. Guess what? Carter beat Ford in 76. Uh, uh, Reagan beat uh, Carter, and uh, Clinton beat Bush. So three times you had a geopolitical shock in the Middle East with an oil price spike, and you had regime change, not in Iran, in two of those three cases. You had regime change in the United States. That's what happened. So if we're going to have that shock, Trump is dead, literally, politically. So the Iranians know it, and even if they are weaker right now, in my view, not now, but by the early summer, they're going to escalate the tension in the Middle East. And mark my word, there'll be a war between U.S. and Iran. It's also a very sobering assessment.